welcome back to Dana's Wanderlust Crochet with Dana and Newly. Of course, he's in a meeting. He's a busy boy. So there's three things um, I want to talk about. First of all, you know, I always uh, start these videos with yarn tubers. I used to call you crochet tubers, but then I realized there's that I have knitters and, um, and, 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 and as subscribers. So, you know, we're yarny kind of people. And now, more recently, I'm subscribing to and others are subscribing to me from different um, communities like um, the soap crafters, you know, people who are making soap, um, farmers, people, you know, like there's the farm all guy, there's the farm family, I can't think of their name that I'm subscribed to. Um, you know, there are people all over. So I just want to say, um, you know, when I say yarn tubers, I'm still thinking of all of you, not just the yarny people and crochet people and knit people. Um, I come from an agricultural background and that's kind of part three of what I want to talk to you guys about. Now what was part two? Oh, <laughs> okay. So for those of you who don't, you know, don't know, in the trucking industry, um, we have what are called ELDs, electronic logging device, where we used to do it all by hand on paper. Um, there's a what we call the ELD mandate, which means that all trucks, basically all trucks, I'm not going to get into the details, um, have to have an electronic logging device on board. So it's, ba you know, like mine is, is it's called a Qualcomm. And it's made, it's part of a company called Omnitrax. And I use that, I just tap in, you know, I'm, I'm driving, I'm on duty, I'm off duty, I'm, I'm in the sleeper berth, whatever. Okay, so that's our logging now, electronic logging devices. Well, Omnitrax on Saturday evening, um, excuse the term, they went tits up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that just came to mind. Uh, Sandy, I hope you enjoy that. <laughs> um, Sandy, at left is right. So um, anyway, we're having issues. Um, so Sunday morning I got up. I was at one of my favorite cafes. So I went in for breakfast and I, and I made sure because looking back, my log for all day Saturday was messed up. It was incorrect. Um, so I got copies of my logs from the previous eight days emailed to me by my covering dispatcher and it took me an hour, hour and a half, but I finally got all day Saturday written out correct on my paper log. It's, you know, some, I had to kind of mentally go back to truck driving school to get that done right, but I got it done. Um, and so it was completely up to date. Then I started my Sunday log and I, all day Sunday, yesterday, I was on a paper log and today, Monday, um, some things have kind of come back. Um, like my eight days back now is correct up until Saturday and Sunday. So Saturday, Sunday, and today, Monday, I'm on paper log. So nationwide, it's not just my trucking company, it's, um, it's nationwide. And it, I don't believe it's all models of these Qualcomm devices. I believe there are models out there by reading um, in our trucker Facebook groups. There are some people who are not having trouble with their Qualcomms. So I have been kind of super focused on my clock, my hours of service clock and my logs to make sure they are absolutely as correct and detailed as I can make them. Just in case uh, some DOT officer wants to take a look at them. I just want them right. I'm just covering myself. So that is uh, what's going on in the trucking industry today. Uh, the third thing I want to talk to you guys about is I kind of want your opinion on this. So. Um, I was just watching Chronically Crocheting and over her left shoulder was the most beautiful, she called it a, a cowl. To me it looks like a poncho, but it was, I mean I'm not a poncho wearing person, 
But that was beautiful. I mean, the black and, and it, it's, it's basically a black, like a beautiful cowl poncho that has this lavender kind of uh, fringe on it. It is gorgeous. Okay, so that is beautiful. I'll tell you what else is beautiful. Um, Sandy at Crochet A has her pattern out with the um, the Scrooty. I saw that Lisa at Lisa's Crochet made one. A lot of people have made one. That is a beautiful piece. And I wouldn't, you know, even in my lifestyle, if the occasion called for it, and I had one of those, I'm, you know, I'm not, you know, beyond wearing one of those, especially that, all oh, that thing that was in Crystal's Chronically Crocheting video. I was just watching that video, and that thing is beautiful. Same with the scruddy. Okay, but, okay, so Crystal lives up in the Coeur d'Alene kind of Spokane-ish kind of area, Pacific Northwest. But, she, but she's very north, and she's east of um, the Blue Mountains. So she's in an area that can get pretty dang chilly in the winter. Okay, well, and Sandy, she's in Canada. And, okay, so I come from a background, you know, when I lived in Colorado, I discovered what a real blizzard was. Because I grew up in, like, different parts of Oregon. And... And when I say different parts, they are different. Western Oregon is not the same place as Eastern Oregon. Um, Western Oregon, where I live now, it's wet. It's rainy. You know, it might get a little warm, kind of warm in the summer. Um, it gets, it's wet in the winter. Occasionally, we get a storm through there every couple years. It kind of devastates us a little bit, you know. But then I moved to Colorado, and I, and so here's the thing about when I was living in Colorado. On my place outside of the Peyton, I lived in the Bijou Basin on 35 acres. And I was training horses right there at the place my husband was overseas. Now in November, I would put on my insulated coveralls and I would wear them until about May. <laughs> I, I would go to the two places I went to the most. If I wasn't home working, I would either go to Walmart to get stocked up or I would go to Big R or both. Big R is like a tractor supply, uh, a D&D supply. It's a, it's, a, it's a farm store. Okay, so I could get feed and I could get all kinds of supplies there. Um, and those are the places I went because I worked at home. And so I would get up in the morning, put on my coveralls in the winter time. I'd feed the horses right around daylight. I would take, I would walk, Dooley and I, you know, he needs to go for a little walk, so I would go with him. And we'd walk, you know, one part of the property, um, come back, and if I had horses in to work, I would go work them and get that out of the way. Um, you know, the horse training slowed down in the winter, that's for sure. But, um, so I would work a horse or two or do whatever needed to be done there get them situation and and one big battle in Colorado is to make sure the water is liquid the water is warm enough to be liquid so the horses always had water so that was something I deal with but otherwise a little lot going on in the winter except you know going to the monthly events down at Latigo Trails or wherever Kit Carson all these different arenas um, that was basically my life I loved it I loved it <laughs> and I missed that but um, anyway, you know, my husband was overseas, um, I had church, which was, you know, Calhan Church of Christ, you know, we're, we're not talking about a big city church here, we're talking about 20 people, you know, um, which made us, you know, a, a pretty, pretty close socially, even, um, Side of church, you know, we, we were friends, and um, but like there would be events coming up, you know, in Colorado Springs that I would have loved to have gone to. But you know, where am I going to wear that beautiful cowl poncho thing that Crystal had in her video? Where am I going to wear Sandy's, um, you know, beautiful scruddy? Even uh, you know.
you know, like a shawl. You know, we didn't belong to one of those churches where they wear these beautiful shawls into church. Now, I, I do have, have church friends who do wear shawls, like a couple, like just a couple. Um, and um, <laughs> so when I make something, and here, here's kind of my point. When I make something, what is it going to be used for? Is this going to be decorative? Um, am I going to wear it? Is it something somebody consigned me to make? Uh, you know, dishcloths, pot holders. If they're functional, I'm all over them. Uh, I have made sh twice. I've been commissioned to make shawls. One of them was the gemstone lace shawl, and I'll see if I can find that link. Uh, it was beautiful, and I didn't make it out of a lacy yarn. I made it out of a carrot cake, out of the, the purple one. I'll see if I can find, remember that colorway. Um, and then I made a corner to corner one for another gal, a gal that I go to church with. Um, and I made that out of Karen Simply Soft. So, um, but I, like my mom and I and, and the people within, you know, my agricultural world and my trucking world, um, we're not wearing shawls. We're not even wearing scarves. And, um, you know, we don't wear those beautiful things. Now, it's not that I'm outside the realm of wearing beautiful things. I got decked out when I went to Vegas in December and saw the National Finals Rodeo. First time in, oh yeah, oh, decked out, yeah. Um, and, if, and if I lived a lifestyle that didn't involve dirty, dirt and grease, and, you know, I would wear those things more often. Like that scrutty. If I was just going to the grocery store and it, and it was cold, like it gets in Colorado, and I imagine it gets pretty cold up there in British Columbia too, right? <laughs> yeah, I would wear that beautiful scrutty just to the grocery store, just to wherever I'm going, out to lunch with a friend, those kinds of things. Um, shawls. Shawls are fun to make. They are fun to make. And I guess when, um, when Lion Brand had the um, shawl in a ball sale, like five for ten dollars, I realize now that I should have got two. I got I got five. I should have got two of each color. So I should have got ten because I want. You know what am I gonna do with them? <laughs> it's still sitting there. So now I'm going to make shawls for. I'm in a little bit bigger. Um, congregation now and I'm pretty sure I can come up with five six people there who would like a beautiful shawl so you know after Christmas you know the first of the year I usually have kind of a, a downtime before I get you know I either go from no projects to being way behind like I am right now you know later in the year so but at the first of the year you know Christmas is over I've I've hustled to get everything done and um And then the first of the year, I'm like, now what? <laughs> so when I find myself in that position, I, I'm going to wait for another Lion Brand sale and make sure I get another of each of those five colors. And I'm going to make good size shawls. I, I mean, real shawls, you know, not a shawlette. And I'm going to put tags on them that basically say, if you found me, I'm yours. Keep me or give me away. Um, and take them to church for those ladies because I just think it would be a fun thing to do but seriously um, are you in a are you, do you live a lifestyle or are you in a culture you know a part of the world a part of the country where people do wear you know shawls shawlettes cowls scrooties beautiful scarves you know I'd love to be able to dress nice <laughs> I'd love to you know I don't have to base my identity on Carhartts and Wranglers is just practical for my lifestyle. Um, my best jacket is a Carhartt. Now granted, it's teal. <laughs> it looks green in the video, but it is, it is truly a bluish, it's teal. <laughs> and I love it. I love it, I love it. And it is so practical. Um, but yeah, that, um, that poncho, fringy poncho, cowl thing that Crystal, ironically crocheting, made. Gorgeous. 
gorgeous. The scrunny of, of Sandy's with that fuzzy, you know, hood. Oh, love it. Love it, you know, but do you have people to give those to, to sell them to, to donate them to? Do you wear those things yourself? You know, that's, that's my question. Um, my crochet skills development course, it, it, for some reason, it's very important to me that every assignment ends up with a piece that is practical somehow. And so the first one was a dishcloth and the second one was that coaster. Yeah, you know, we can use those ourselves. Um, um, and more importantly, they exercise you, they teach you in a stitch and, and you exercise, you practice that stitch in that project. The third one is going to be a scarf because I want the double crochet. We want to get the muscle memory going on a double crochet because the first one was single, second one was half double. And now we're on to double crochet, and then we're going to go on to granny squares. But um, I, the thing with the scarf is not everybody wears scarves. Now, in certain situations, if for some reason my coat, my car heart, or my insulated coveralls, you know, left a part of my neck exposed, and I was in that kind of weather that I was in Colorado, that I'm not in now, you know, unless I'm driving into it, um, I'm not going to wear a scarf. And it's not going to be a fringy scarf. It's going to have a border on it so that um, it can be kind of unisex if needed. So how I'm going to make that practical is if you don't wear scarves, you know, donate it because um, there are people who need scarves. So you know, I so that's that's my discussion with you today about crochet um, and knitting or whatever your. Um, your creativity is if you're making if you're making things you know some of you are making things strictly um, on you know because somebody consigned you somebody wants has is paying you to make things or you're making them for um, like a, a craft fair or are you making them for gifts do you wear these things this is why I am really into decorative afghans um, you know I have done my kid Christian crochet crowd does a lot of afghans that I like I have done his Joanne's mystery blanket crochet along only he did it in kind of a like a red and pink and cream color I did it in blues and cream uh, for a friend of mine and I did it smaller made it out you know he did it in um, Burnett blanket yarn and I'm right now I have started his um, snowflake like his blizzard afghan that David Dan actually designed and it, the motifs have a white snowflake in the middle and there are some different blues um, in between and bordering it um, would like to do his study of texture from a few years ago, you know, around the town square because I love those, um, I like defined stitches and those bobbles and those front post, back post, that, that texture in a blanket. And his study of planet earth, I think, you know, love that because to me they're not only beautiful and, um, you know, textured and there's a lot going on there. Um, they're also practical, you know, if, depending on the person that you make them for. Like, I, my mom likes to take afternoon naps on the couch, so, you know, I'd like to make her something, you know, that not only is beautiful and decorative, but something she can use for that. So, to me, if I start a project, I, I, I totally get starting a project because you want to try it totally get it done it and I do it over and over again I'm not saying that every project has a specific purpose when I start it but for the most part most of my projects do hello Pete Pete 379 so anyway what are your opinions on that you know how practical is your project you know and not everybody wants to be practical they're they're just making a piece of art. Totally get it. Totally get it. Let's 
have that discussion. And besides, I just wanted to let you guys know what's going on. I left Payette, Idaho this morning. All I have to do is get over to the western side of Oregon because I deliver over there tomorrow night at 11, like 11 o'clock. So 21, 29, uh, maybe 9 o'clock. Yeah, somewhere in there. Sometime after dark, of course. But uh, yeah, so I got two days to make a one-day trip. I don't like that. I, I like it to be kind of, you know, I like to have a little bit of leeway, but because um, I don't like those tight tight schedules because then I get you know I get tense and I feel pushed and a lot of pressure ah, I panic. but uh, <laughs> but you know I'm gonna be sitting a lot on this load so but that's okay I'll spend the night at, um, at home tonight uh, with Julie's grandma and I'll get back on the truck tomorrow so anyway give me your opinion on that um, well, you know do you, do you like to make projects on purpose or do you, you know, do it most of the time just because you want to try it, which is totally cool? Um, what do you do with them? What do you do with them when you're done? Anyway, I love you guys. Bye.